So I'll start with the first case that I have. It's a 20 year old male with bilateral hip affection, gradually increasing since last five years. On examination, bilateral hip fixed flexion contractures 50 to 60 degrees, bilateral hip fixed in abduction and external rotation. There is a compensatory lumbar lordosis. The movements at the hip joint are nil. Infection markers are normal. HLA B27 flow cytometry is positive. ESR of 20, CRP 7. Almost inflammation markers are very, very less. So this is what the guy looks like on standing. If you see, uh, unlike a normal spondylos uh, ankylosing spondylitis patient, this patient did not have a hyperlordosis or retroflex pelvis. This has an exited lumbar lordosis with a forward flex pelvis. There is a pseudokyphotic deformity. We will discuss on that. On lying down, the moment he flexes his hip, you see this entire spine deformity goes off. It's all basically a compensation. The moment he tries to extend the hip, there is exaggerated lumbar lordosis that we used to see in these cases. It was very tough to identify the abductors, but definitely the hip is forward flex. The sacral slope is very high. So the same guy, while walking and lying, doing backward. The hips are totally fused in uh, flexion. There is a compensatory lumbar lordosis, forward flex pelvis. This is very important to identify what kind of position we will fix up. So the key step that we had was separation of femur from the pelvis. And second was mm -hmm. locating the true acetabulum and avoid any malrotation, any malfixation of the acetabular component. So the pre-op x-ray is the pelvis AP view. This was eight, nine years back. The left hip was grossly fused up right hip you see there is a bit of shortening across on that spectrum there is a high center of rotation and uh, these are the lateral views of the right hip and the left hip you see there's a total fused mass from the femur to the acetabulum uh, that time we don't do it but today if you have it i would love to have a ct scan with a 3d recon images in the current view but this is an old uh, patient that we had through so while moving ahead we knew the 20 year old young bilateral hip involvement, ankylosing spondylitis with hips fixed in flexion, abduction, external rotation. Now, how to take it down and what are the challenges that we have? The first challenge that you have in these kind of cases, especially in our countries, is what kind of an anesthesia? A couple of times, my anesthetists are still able to negotiate with regional anesthesia because ligamentum flavum is still uh, pristine in these cases. But majority of times, they land up to GA. But in a GA, the biggest problem is the decreased mouth opening, the fixation of uh, vocal cords, equitinoid joints. So in order to prevent any flexion of the cervical spine to create a hyper extension, majority of times it's a fiber optic intubation or many times video laryscopy is required through. Also, these patients have compromised PFT, lung expansion, so GA is very, very cautious. The position of the hips and the approach is a telltale. Uh, my preferred approach for all this extensile style is posterolateral, modified posterolateral, as Rami told you. Uh, the positioning of the hips is very, very important. I would always like to do it myself so as to equate myself with deformities of the pelvis and the spine. There is a choice of a single sitting or stage bilateral. We did a bilateral, and that time we were doing at a three days gap. There is an advantage because we do not want to have subsequent uh, dislocations developing in uh, where to position of the osteotomy and how to expose these hips. Identification of the center of rotation of these hips since it's very young and active patient and all these patients have a high predisposition to dislocations. So what kind of an implant and uh, tribology to be selected? Uh, as we all know with hip, uh, hip flexion contractures, there is a higher chance of damage to the sciatic nerve and how to close the soft tissues. And also, the end, uh, all these patients, they have a higher chances of heterotopic ossification. In our center, we follow uh, Indomethacin 25 milligram TDS for all these hips for four weeks for whatever advantage it has. And uh, dislocation prevention was one of the big things. So as a plan out for these cases, at that stage, the delta motion uh, large head. So they were talking of hard and hard bearing large head at that stage was recently launched. It was around uh, 2012, I think. And uh, we planned for a delta motion ceramic on ceramic articulation large head in these cases for a pretext that uh, less chances of dislocation and give us more durability to roll around. Anesthesia, we gave a general anesthesia for this patient. Positioning, as you see, is always a problem. How to square up the pelvis, where to put up your sports across to fix up your uh, SI joint sacrum as well as the pubic symphysis and positioning the hips. I am not uh, going in much details because subsequent speakers have to elaborate that point in few of their cases, but the positioning is extremely important uh, in these parameters. We intended to go with the 
dual approach, the postlateral approach, 15 to 20 centimeter incision. The you get across the gluteus maximus. Now, as a parameter for these cases, uh, normally I never touch my glute max insertion, but in these cases, I release my glute max for two basic reasons. The first thing is to decrease the pressure on the sciatic nerve, and second thing is by releasing that the anterior mobilization of femur becomes easy because the main touch story is how do you deal and ream the acetabulum. So it gives me a maneuverable parameter on that part. Now, with these cases, first pitch, I started with the left side, which was total fused mass. Uh, we could not negotiate directly onto the posterior because there were high chances of damaging the posterior wall. As a normal trick, when I handle these stages posteriorly, I would just take off three to four millimeters of posterior stable wall and that would help me up. But in this case, we decided to move in for a dual approach. I'll just touch the basis because Dr. Bosley is going to speak in detail on this approach. Uh, we normally go interiorly in this. Uh, it's preferably a uh, modified Watson Jones where you go in the intermal between the glute med and gluteus medius and TFL. And at times it's still tougher, then we have to uh, come back as a modified hard inch between interior one third to middle third. Our parameter requirement out of interior approach is just one thing. We want to have a uh, double wafer section, napkin ring, osteotomy, two rings, and do a decapitation, do an osteotomy, and remove the interior capsule. So since we have flexion contractures, we want to remove the capsule from the interior stuff also. So interior capsulectomy is done. Double wafer neck osteotomy is done. We do not take out any head from the interior approach. The moment that is done, we flip back posteriorly. For the interior path, we turn the table 20 degrees towards the surgeon. And when we have to flip back to the posterior approach back again, we flip the table 20 degrees away from the surgeon to the opposite side. Yeah, Manoj, carry on. Yeah. 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 So uh, external rotators, periformis, and uh, three traders with quadratus femoris are taken off. And... The trick is once you do that, the femur is mobilized anteriorly and you're down to a fixed mass of the acetabulum with the head. Now, there are a couple of bony landmarks if you run through. Anteriorly, we have the anterior pene, we like spine. Inferiorly, we have the obstructive foramen. Uh, in the tough, tougher tough cases, I would put up a 2 mm credit K wire. It helps me identify where is the hip center and use a CM to do that. So, with graters and with nibblers, this bone is taken off. And we also keep a small spike of bone superiorly so that during our cup, we have our anchored move through where our version and nucleation are. So in this case, the position of establum was very, very important. Now in this case, as contrary to hyperlordotic, we have a hyperlordotic stage. So, and a high sacral slope, forward flex pelvis. So we went in for planned inclination of around 45 degrees and a high level of version than normal. Now, what I follow through, and I would, would advocate strongly, there are different ways to move through. I work in more with a combined anti-version theory. We put our trial cup inside. We go with a femur. Since we have a delta motion cup, I cannot change the cup subsequently. We put up a trial cup initially. We put in the femur with the required amount of an anti-version. Look in the combined anti-version. My combined anti-version plan was 30 to 40 degrees, 35 to 40 degrees in this case. So 360 degree exposure of the acetabulum is done. So for reaching the true acetabulum, there are different markers, fat pad in the pulvinar, the ligamentum teres, the tal. Tal is a very important parameter that I always fall through for these kind of cases because it helps me decide where my antiversion and inclination of the cup is going to be and where is going to be the true center of rotation of my hip. So I put my cup in parallel with the tal, planned at 40, 45, 45 degrees of inclination and combined antiversion of around 40 degrees. So this is the porous coated cup. Delta motion cup, you have to be extremely cautious because it does not give you any propensity to put in the screws. So if you don't put your cup well, or if you malfunction your cup, you can't get off. So ceramic liner and ceramic head, what this is what you see is my combined anti-version, concentric. And normally closing these hips is normal tough to close on your tendons back. In those cases, we do a fan-shaped quadratus femoris to cover our caps. So uh, with this thing, the left hip was done and three days later, we handled the right hip. Now, if you look back at these, my left hip, when the pelvis was totally fixed, is still open with a wide angle, abduction angle. And on the left hip, by that time, our pelvis was almost squared up. We had already done one side three days later. There is a restoration of limb length and uh, nice. a decent sort of emotion. So... So all uh, yeah. this, which is this last slide. So all this, my friends will show you different ways, but as a carry home, Vijay is going to articulate that. He's a fantastic guy, but there are different ways to do it. All roads lead to loam, but everyone has to choose his own as long as you reach a decent end point. 
we all have to understand the rules to the game the rules are simple but it is difficult to play simple so understand on the fundamentals the positioning and this is what would bail you out of majority of options yeah very 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 well done manoj yeah so uh, 